Using a split system air conditioner or heat pump is common in residential and commercial applications. It's called a split system because the indoor and outdoor components are separated or split from each other and are connected by refrigerant piping and control wiring. This differs from a self-contained rooftop package unit which houses both indoor and outdoor components. We'll see different designs using split systems. HVAC split systems are convenient to use with existing buildings because it's much easier to route small refrigerant piping to the indoor coil than to run much larger air ducts using a rooftop package unit. As you can see, the rooftop unit needs large openings for the supply and return ducts to enter the building. The split system uses smaller copper tubing and requires small opening in the roof or wall. Refrigerant carries more heat capacity than air, which allows small refrigerant piping to easily maneuver through building structures and components as opposed to large air ducts. This is what gives split systems their advantage, except when it comes to ASHRAE 62.1, ventilation air requirements, which we'll discuss later. The split system is made up of the outdoor unit, often called the condensing unit, because this is where the refrigerant condenses from a gas back into a liquid, and an indoor unit where the evaporator is located. The indoor unit can be called an air handling unit, AHU, fan coil, or a furnace with coil. Split systems are available from less than one ton to over a hundred tons of refrigeration capacity. Split systems come in two basic configurations, either as cooling only or as heat pump, which we'll explain later. Heating can be in the form of a gas furnace, electric strip heater, electric heat pump, hot water, or steam. Here we show two ways of getting heat to the occupied space using a split system. First you can use a split system heat pump, which works to cool the space in summer and heat the space in winter. See our video on heat pumps to understand how they work. The other option is to install a furnace with a coil. The furnace will require some form of fuel, such as natural gas, for heating. Cooling will be accomplished by installing an evaporator coil on top of the furnace, which is connected to an outside condenser. The furnace will require combustion air inlet and a means of exhaust combustion gases outdoor. It's important that the discharge flue remain a minimum of 10 feet away from any air intake. Check your local code for the proper distance. You'll need to install a condensate drain pipe from the cooling coil drain pan to an approved receptor, like a floor sink or the tailpipe of a sink. Electrical will need to be installed from a breaker panel to a disconnect switch located near the equipment. The disconnect switch is a safety device that allows any technician working on the equipment to lock out the electrical power feeding the HVAC equipment. Another option is to use a boiler to provide heating hot water to a coil located inside the air handler. The boiler will need a source of fuel for combustion, in this case natural gas. The heating hot water will need to have a pump to circulate the water to all of the air handlers in the building. Here we only show one air handler getting heating hot water but it could also be dozens more in larger buildings. The heating hot water piping will need to be insulated, most likely with some form of fiberglass pipe insulation to prevent the loss of heat from the pipes. Not shown is makeup water and any other accessories like expansion tanks. This could also be a steam boiler with a steam coil in the air handler to provide heating. One of the challenges for split systems is providing the required ventilation air to each of the air handlers. Ventilation air will need to be provided to each space or indoor fan coil or air handler per ASHRAE 62.1. This requires a duct from the outside or from a DOAS unit to the space or fan coil. See our video on dedicated outside air systems for a better understanding. 
The dedicated outside air system filters and conditions the outside air before the fan sends it to each of the air handlers. The dedicated outside air system handles the latent load of the ventilation air so that the air handlers won't need to be upsized for this additional load. Each air handler will receive the required amount of ventilation air per ASHRAE 62.1 based on the occupancy level, size of the room, and space usage type. Another option is to provide ventilation air using just filtration and a supply fan, but no conditioning of the outside air. This relieves the indoor air handler's fan from needing to pull in outside air. The disadvantage is that the air handler will need to handle the additional heating and cooling load for the ventilation air. The lowest first cost option would be to duct the ventilation air individually from each indoor air handler. This would require additional energy of the air handler fan and coil. This would require a lot of small ducts running through the building from each air handler, unless you required an economizer for your indoor air handler because it meets the threshold of your energy code. Then the ducts would be much larger and may not make sense. As shown before, each air handler has a condensate drain going to the tailpiece of the sink. The condensing unit contains two major components, the compressor and the condenser coil. The compressor is the heart of the unit and pumps the refrigerant around the piping circuit. The condenser coil provides a means of rejecting the heat to the outdoors using a fan blowing air over a hot coil. In this picture, we can see that this condenser hasn't been maintained and is covered with dirt. This will reduce the capacity of the unit, so be sure to check your outdoor coil at least once or twice a year to ensure it's clean. We can see the hot gas discharge piping coming off the top of the compressor and feeding the condenser coil, which is responsible for rejecting the heat from the building. But in this poor condition, it won't be working. Here is the filter dryer that's on the hot liquid line leaving the condenser and sending liquid to the expansion valve at the evaporator. Here is the suction piping that has arrived from the indoor evaporator section and is entering the compressor below the discharge piping. This is the ugly insides. Here is what the condenser may look like from the outside. The air handler contains the indoor fan and evaporator coil. The evaporator coil is where the refrigerant absorbs the heat from the building air that is being blown over the coil. This causes the refrigerant liquid in the evaporator to evaporate while cooling down the building air. See our video on Refrigerant Cycle 101 to better understand how a refrigerant cycle works. The expansion valve or metering device separates the high side from the low side and modulates the amount of refrigerant that passes through it in relationship to demand. The indoor unit can be ducted or ductless. Residential systems are relatively simple and smaller, while the commercial versions can be very large and have many other options installed within their housing. Commercial air handlers can be packaged, custom made, or built up with individual components selected and field erected. See our other video on air handling units for a better understanding. If you like that video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Thank you.